Hi, this is Rick Moranta from Pinched Head, and today I'm going to show you how to build a simple slide out menu in Lectora. Now, before I show you how to build the menu, let's just take a look at it in action. Uh, you notice here's our uh, preview, HTML preview of uh, our uh, course. Um, you, you see we have a fairly uncluttered um, stage area where the content is displayed. Uh, if you want to navigate, you can go use the forward and back button, but you can also uh, click on the menu button. And you see when you click on it, out slides the menu from the left. And when you click it again, it disappears. So there's a, a nice little slide out effect that's fairly simple. Now what I like about this uh, menu is that when it's not there it leaves a fairly uncluttered surface uh, where you can show your content but also um, it's it's a, uh, a nice tree view where you can drill down into the content um, so you can expand the sections, subsections and it'll also pick up the pages from Lectora. So whenever you add a new page it adds into this menu. Another nice thing is wh whatever page you're on, um, you get highlighted um, in the menu, so you always know where you are. Okay, the first thing uh, we need to do to get this uh, menu going is to add the table of contents object. Um, we do this by going up to um, add, over to object, and down to table of contents. The other way we can do this is that we can go to a page and right click and say new object and then there we can also uh, choose table of contents. But uh, I've uh, created the item already and I've named it nav so I'm just making that visible there. So you can see um, that also I've also put the the table of contents object at the top of my uh, course hierarchy and that's because I want my menu to display um, throughout the titles. What's nice about this built-in object is that it automatically populates the names um, of the menu items from your chapters, sections, and pages so that you don't have to create links manually to your pages. It also, as I pointed out earlier, keeps track of what page you are on when a user clicks on these links. So if you notice here, Course Overview, well this, this item here is drawn right from the chapter level heading. This makes it quite convenient when you add pages or add chapters or sections that it automatically populates this menu with those items. Okay, let's take a look at the properties of this table of contents object um, that we have here in Lectora. We can do that by right-clicking on the object and choosing properties, or we can just double-click on it. Um, the first thing you'll notice th is that the appearance is set to tree view. Now, there's a, other, a couple of other choices that you can have, but for, for this, uh, we want to have that nice uh, hierarchical menu that we showed you earlier. The second thing we do is we click... Uh, the box that says always on top. Make sure that's checked because we want everything to appear on top of the content in this course. Uh, the, the, the next thing we want to do is we want to uncheck the box that says initially visible because we don't want this to be visible unless we click the menu button on the top right. The last thing we do is we uncheck the box that says use icons. Um, down there uh, because Lectora has these standard built-in icons for this table of contents of a chapter and a book and a page that don't quite fit in with what we're doing here. We just want to keep it simple. If we uh, click on the transitions tab you'll notice that we have a transition in set to uh, fly left and that's actually what gives us that uh, sliding in look of the menu. So it's pretty simple. Um, there are other ways to achieve that kind of movement on stage in Lectora. You can use actions, but um, you know we just try to use this to, to keep it simple. The other thing you'll notice is that uh, we've set the background color uh, to a custom color. And that color is actually the same color as the background graphic we're going to be laying this table of contents object over. 
so that it'll look a little bit more uh, like part of the graphic and not like this this thing sitting out there in the open. Unfortunately, the table of contents object comes only in this rectangular shape, and also the the border is something that you can't really get get rid of. So we basically just try to to make it look like it was an inset into the graphic uh, below it, and then we we created some rounded uh, corners for that graphic. So like I mentioned, um, if you just use this table of contents object, um, it sort of sits out there and it, it doesn't always fit in with your interface design. So what we did was we create a background image that has a little bit more curvature to it and we sort of put the table of contents on there and it sort of looks like it's an inset um, into the graphic. Um, what we actually did was um, we used a 8-bit PNG file. The reason why we did that is because uh, some browsers like Internet Explorer uh, 6 that our clients were using do not display 24-bit uh, transparent graphics uh, such as PNGs very well. So um, we did that so that we could get that sort of nice look that like it's uh, you no know, overlay otherwise you'd see a gray box or a white box around it so it takes let's take a look at the properties here uh, you'll notice that I s uh, unchecked initially visible that's because uh, I want like the table of contents this to appear when we press the menu button um, this will basically slide out at the same time as the table of contents in the background. So you'll notice there that uh, we set the transition also to fly left at the same speed and it will uh, fly in um, as one. Okay, so I mentioned that the, um, the table of contents object I set to uh, the same color as the graphic. So how I did that is I just uh, went into the properties chose um, the background color and custom color and what you can do is you, you can use the selection tool and just simply select the the color of the graphic beneath it and just say okay so it, and that actually will choose the same color so that when it's on top it looks like it's part of the same thing so that's not too complicated The only thing next to do is to uh, put some actions on the buttons uh, so that the menu can slide out. To do that, we go over to the menu up button and we'll notice two actions. Um, one, the first is um, on click toggle the visibility uh, of the background. The other one is to toggle the visibility of the table of contents. So if we take a look at the um, properties there, you'll see on mouse click uh, the action is toggle visibility state and we've chosen the target as the menu background. Um, the other one is basically the same thing. We uh, mouse click, we toggle visibility state and we choose the nav. So that basically when you kick, click the button, um, it will toggle the visibility state and then those uh, transitions that are on those objects will um, kick in and it'll uh, look like it's sliding in from the from the left. So this is really not a complicated uh, procedure. Um, it, it works well and uh, you're using the built-in features of Lectora to give you a nice menu that tracks where you are, that allows your users to drill down and it, it can look a little bit more like it's part of the interface uh, with, a, with a background graphic. Um, you know, there's probably other things you can do uh, with JavaScript and Flash, but this is fairly simple and I think uh, pretty useful. Thanks again. That's Rick Maranta from Pinched Head. Take care.